There's something quite addictive about Tesla coils. You just keep coming back to them and modifying them and building them up again and again. And in the short time I've been putting this together, it's already changed quite a number of times. Uh, you'll see that if you watch the video, that it, things have changed as the video goes on. Uh, it started on, we could run it from battery, which I still can, um, because we can then put a Variac on this and test it uh, without the DC voltages being varied. But it's also had modifications so it can run straight off the mains uh, and it has a fibre input so we can control it externally and our heat sink. So far I haven't needed to fan cool these but that's another mod that may happen. Okay, I'm going to try a little upgrade here from half bridge to a full bridge. Uh, probably breaks it on the way, but <laughs> we're going to give it a go. It's quite modular, so I can adapt it and change it as I go on. Um, so it's just a quick overview. It started off as a half bridge. It now has a, an H bridge arrangement with IGBTs here. It's still running on a battery supply, running the electronics so that it can be adjusted on a Variac without any problems. Um, but I've also made a couple of coils for it for the primaries. It started off with this coil and already it has changed to Another criteria for this Tesla coil was to use mostly recycled parts. So, um, other than the IGBTs, which were the cheapest ones I could find, the heat sinks and boxes and pipes and everything were all found as second hand. Uh, heat sinks were actually out of large uh, uh, power supply, uh, switch mode power supply, fittingly enough. It's actually a bit of a dying art. They used to build uh, electronic equipment with uh, maintenance in mind, but we don't repair much now, so everything's built so you can't get into it again. I've tried to make this one, because it's a project now, want to change bits and pieces. It's kind of been built modularly that I can actually pull the bits apart to get into it. Uh, and I say most of the parts have come out of all the power supplies and things I've salvaged. So literally now it all just clips together quite nicely for any future kind of maintenance. I've also uh, colour coded the connections for the gates on the IGBTs just to make it uh, less likely to make a fatal error plugging these things back in again. As I said, I've made this Tesla coil modular and a good reason for that because I want to be able to modify it easily. So I've already had to take it apart because I now want to change this bridge uh, rectifier here uh, with a slightly softer start arrangement. With this large capacitor, the inrush can trip the breaker. Uh, so I'm going to replace this with uh, a little circuit made up with a thyristor bridge to, to basically do a soft start on initial power up. So this is it with the uh, new soft start bridge in place and on the the each bridge unit uh, ready to go back in. So I need some uh, work done on the uh, top load. This isn't ideal at all, um, but when I tried modifying it recently, I got racing arcs on the coil. So. Uh, I need this for enough, a couple of week, a week's time, so I'm leaving it as is just now. For speed, I bought this uh, interrupter uh, for the controller. It's a fibre optic. Um, I modified it a little bit so it runs on batteries and has a power switch. Uh, it also has a different fibre optic output rather than the one that they supply with here. It's quite good, it's got a couple of wee quirks to it uh, and occasionally it will kind of crash but um, otherwise it seems okay. It's good for the, for the speed of getting something together.
So that's it up to date at the moment uh, until the next change and I'm sure there'll be plenty more. I still have that top load issue to sort out.